the value of gold is going to be broadly unchanged. But what will happen is the value of credit will collapse. Mm. And that obviously gets reflected in, um, uh, you know, purchasing, uh, let, you know, sort of rate, say, between dollars or euros and gold or whatever, um, which makes you think that gold's gone up. I mean, it's not gold going up. Now, eventually that will happen. That is what happens when, when the value of credit collapses. Um, forget what the price is in, in, you know, in paper marks or paper dollars yeah. or whatever it might be. You know, the gold price, you'll find that the, at that stage, the purchasing power of gold will absolutely rock it. Fiat currency, like the U.S. dollar and other government-issued currencies, presents significant challenges to wealth preservation. Over time, one of the most concerning issues with fiat currency is its diminishing purchasing power. Visual capitalist data reveals that since 1971, the U.S. dollar has lost 98% of its purchasing power. The U.S. dollar has recently been a prominent topic, with growing discussions about reducing its role in international trade. In contrast, the price of gold has faced some fluctuations, with a 5% drop in a week and a nearly 4% decline in a month. Despite this short-term volatility, Alistair MacLeod believes that gold's intrinsic value will likely remain relatively stable. However, he underscores a crucial point. The value of credit, represented by currencies such as the dollar and euro, is expected to collapse. This devaluation of credit will create the illusion of rising gold prices, while in reality, the declining purchasing power of these currencies drives this perception. Consequently, even with relatively high interest rates, the situation is expected to persist, posing substantial challenges for businesses that have heavily leveraged themselves during the era of near zero or negative interest rates, especially in the European Union. Central banks are likely to face significant difficulties in responding to this situation. They have amassed negative equity because of their involvement in the bond market through quantitative easing, QE. Given their precarious financial positions, as bond prices decline and non-performing loans increase, central banks have limited options to rescue the financial system. To address these issues, central banks may resort to massive credit expansion. This move could have dire consequences for ordinary people, including pensioners and those dependent on state support, as their purchasing power erodes. McLeod foresees potentially devastating outcomes, particularly for vulnerable groups like pensioners and ordinary individuals who rely on state support for their financial well-being. We will now bring you clips from Alistair McLeod's interview with Kinesis Money, but before we do, if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. An awful lot of people who are gold bugs in our camp um, are looking at it completely the wrong way. They they think that it's an investment, um, you know, which they buy it, you know, if they're lucky at 1800 and they sell at 2000 or something mm. like that. You know, mm. it's not an investment, it's money. And it's the superior form of money to credit. Uh, and uh, so you acquire it as a hedge against the collapse of the purchasing power of of credit. So, you know, what the price is going to be, say, in a year or two years' time. I would assume that the value of gold is going to be broadly unchanged. When when the value of credit collapses, um, forget what the price is in, in, you know, in paper marks or paper dollars yeah. or whatever it might be. You know, the gold price, you'll find that the, at that stage, the purchasing power of gold will absolutely rock it. But that's not what we're talking about at the moment. All we're talking about is the purchasing power of unattached credit sinking. And it's going to sink at such rates that uh, not only are high interest rates, I mean, these are not high interest rates anyway. Um, these levels are going to persist and the interest rates are going to go even higher. And if you think about that, the, the effect on businesses which um, have over leveraged themselves uh, debt wise at um, zero interest rates, um, negative interest rates in the, the European Union, uh, you can see that, um, you know, there's there is a lot of pain to come. And um, how, how are the, the authorities going to respond to that? Well, let's look at the central banks. They're all in negative equity. Why? Because they ramped up the bond market and then bought bonds right at the top. It's called QE. And now they're deeply underwater and not admitting it. How are they going to rescue banks whose balance sheets come under pressure from falling bond prices um, in particular and also 
um, non-performing loans. I mean, particularly from the, um, you know, the wider economy, because 80 percent of the economy is small and medium sized businesses, not the, you know, the big, big stuff that <laughs> always fills the, the newspaper headlines. I mean, you know, this, how are they going to do this? I mean, to try and rescue the entire system uh, when the system itself is in negative equity mm. basically means that um, you're going to get, uh, you know, a massive expansion of the quantity of senior credit. And it is credit. This is what the central banks issue in the form of notes and also obligations in the form of reserves and whatever to, to commercial banks. That is a senior form of credit. It's not money. It is credit. And amazingly, I mean, I have so many economists who tell me that, no, 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 no. No, what the central bank issues uh, and base money is money. It's replaced gold. Oh, come on. <laughs> they don't understand it. They really don't. There's a very nasty lesson for us all, I'm afraid. I, I don't welcome this at all, Andy. I think this is... This is going to be terrible. Um, I mean, you know, the poor, and by this I also mean pensioners and all the rest of it, ordinary people who have relied on the state um, to provide them with pensions and so on and so forth. I mean, they're going to get wiped out. This is not good. This really is not, not good. China's central bank extended its gold buying spree to the 10th straight month as the world's second largest economy seeks to move away from its reliance on dollar reserves. According to Bloomberg, the People's Bank of China's stockpile of the precious metal climbed by 29 tons in August to 2,165 tons. A total of about 217 tons were added over the last 10 months, the outlet said. Gold prices in China have soared, hitting a historic relative high with a more than 100 premium dollars per ounce over metal prices in New York or London, according to Bloomberg. According to McLeod, the Chinese have accumulated a substantial amount of gold, estimated at around 21,000 tons through deliveries from the Shanghai Gold Exchange alone. Additionally, it is suggested that an additional 25,000 to 30,000 tons may be held by the state, along with a further 20,000 tons in the hands of the public. This considerable stockpile of gold positions China well in anticipation of any potential collapse of Western fiat currencies. McLeod notes that the Chinese government seems cautious about triggering such a collapse and is content to let Western currencies face their challenges while preserving their advantageous position regarding gold. Let's get back to the interview. Independently of Roman law, which set out things that, you know, gold is money and the rest is credit, um, and all us Westerners have it as the basis of our common law. It doesn't matter what our governments have said subsequently, that is fact. Um, the Chinese already got there by, you know, different routes, if you like. Um, so, yeah, they realized that it is money. Now, uh, after um, the death of Mao, um, in 1983, um, uh, legislation was produced which appointed the People's Bank of China as the sole, um, uh, uh, the sole responsibility of acquiring and managing the state's gold reserves. Okay, so that was 1983. They started accumulating gold at a time when there was a massive bear market in gold, which took it down from, I mean, 1983, I think it was about four or 500 bucks, something like that, down to 250 or something in 2022. Coincidentally, in 2022, they'd obviously decided that they'd got enough gold. Now, I should also add that they... Um, uh, they increased their mine output, deliberately invested in mine output. Yeah. So they became the largest miner in the world by a country mile. They also um, ensured they continued to have a monopoly over refining. And they were even importing uh, mm -hmm. gold from elsewhere or dory or whatever and refining it. And did it ever leave? Did it? Hell is like. No, it stayed there. So that was interesting. Now, they obviously decided that they'd acquired enough gold by 2022, to allow people to begin to acquire gold. And that was why the Shanghai Gold Exchange was set up again under the control of the People's Bank. It's 100% owned by the People's Bank. Uh, so <laughs> since then, um, as you rightly pointed out, they've, um, you know, they've even had television adverts, buy gold, whatever, whatever, mm. whatever. And, you know, the Chinese people haven't needed a lot of persuading. It's it's come out of the vaults. The, you know the, what we look at is the is the Shanghai Gold Exchange um, uh, deliveries out of the vaults, 
it, it's really come out uh, in, in, into two markets. I mean, there's a bar market. Uh, and at the same time, um, you've obviously got the jewellery market. So if you talk to the World Gold Council, they're really concentrating on the jewellery side. Um, but since then, I, you know, um, the people have accumulated, um, I think if you tot it up, something like 21,000 tonnes of, of gold on yeah. the basis of these deliveries. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is fascinating. The result is that they've probably got, I don't know, somewhere between 25 and 30,000 tonnes. And that's the state. On top of which, um, there's a further sort of, I don't know, 20 odd thousand tons in the hands of the public. This is a very, very big slice of above ground stocks. And so they are well protected against the time when uh, Western fiat currencies uh, actually, you know, meet their Armageddon. Uh, you know, they, the Chinese are already there. It's just they don't want to trigger it. You know, this, this is... Mm. The Russians are a lot more aggressive. But as far as the Chinese are concerned, no, we will let the West make mistakes. We will let Western currencies, um, you know, sink. We will let all that happen. We are not going to aggravate this situation. As the purchasing power of fiat currencies continues to erode amid escalating inflation, investors and central banks will increasingly turn to gold as a crucial component of their currency holdings. How do you see the future of fiat currencies and gold as stores of value? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.